In this video, we're going to look at what constitutes a good UCAT score and how we can get you to achieve it. So first, let's start with what the UCAT is. The UCAT consortium on their website say that the University Clinical Aptitude Test is an admissions test used by a consortium of UK universities for their medical and dental degree programs. The UCAT helps universities to select applicants with the most appropriate mental abilities, attitudes and professional behaviours required for new doctors and dentists to be successful in their clinical careers. In summary, it's a test to see if you have the abilities that they deem important to make a good dentist or doctor. Okay, so let's look at some hard numbers. Of course, this changes year by year, but typically the average score for the first four sections lies somewhere between 620 and 630. So for example, in 2019, the average score for the UCAT first four sections was 620, in 2020 it was 628, and then in 2021 it was 625. And typically, in any given section, a score of over 650 would be considered a good score, and a high score would be 680. When you take it section by section, verbal reasoning is usually the worst performing one. Typically an average is about 570, something like that, and quantitative reasoning is usually the one that people do best in with an average score of around 665. Then abstract reasoning, you can have a range from about 630 to 650 as the average and decision making year by year is massively variable. When it comes to SJT, you want to be aiming for the top two bands. One of the key tactical questions I get is, should I work on the areas that I'm weak on on those sections or should I double down and increase the score on the ones that I'm naturally good at already? Well, when answering this, I always think that it's important to go back to your original goal. Are you just trying to get the best you can? Do you think that an hour spent on quantitative reasoning, if you're already good at maths, will increase your score by 20 points, whereas doing verbal reasoning, which you're not so good at, an hour spent might only increase them by 10 points. Does that matter? Because if you're trying to get the better overall score, then yeah, of course, that would be the best way to go. However, if you're applying to a university that has a cutoff score, and if you get below 500 in the verbal reasoning, then you won't be eligible to apply to that university, then that's something to consider as well. So you need to weigh up and go back to your original goal as to why you're doing this, what you're aiming for, and how it will guide your training. The first thing I would say is to, at this stage, really lay the groundwork and get to that 80% understanding so that you're getting most of the questions correct. I would say that it's really important to understand all the questions, the key techniques, the most effective and most speedy ones, and more importantly, why they work. My online course, which you can check out here, is by far the best way to do that and make sure you have a really solid foundation and understanding. My second tip is to reiterate just how important important it is to focus on one section at a time. Again, I'll show you my favorite example from this book, which is, if you look here, it shows the difference between focusing on loads of different things and showing just marginal improvement in a million areas versus being laser focused on one and just by focusing on that one thing, having a way bigger impact in your efforts. And my third tip, which actually relates to the previous one, is that once you feel like you've got good at a section and you understand it well, I won't say mastered, but once you move on to the next one, just occasionally come back and practice again once in a while, just the previous sections, just to leave them on maintenance. The analogy I use is a bit like spinning plates. When people are spinning plates, what they do is they'll put a new plate up and they'll put loads and loads of effort in to get it going, but then occasionally they'll have to go back to the other plates and just do a few little repetitions on them just to make sure everything's spinning and keeping from falling. My fourth tip is to highlight just how important it is to practice on a screen. It's very tempting to get a book and bury your head in that, but remember that the UCAT test is on a computer. It feels different, it looks different, and it just generally is different. So you have to go fast, and I say that the best way to do that is to practice by simulating the test as much as possible in your practice. So practicing on a computer will help you get used to it more and just go faster when it comes to the the real thing. My fifth and final tip is to do whatever you can to make the UCAT as enjoyable as possible. Like I say, you can treat these like little brain teasers and challenge yourself and kind of try and make them as fun as possible. If you can try and make yourself enjoy these the same the way that you would a Sudoku or a brain teaser, it will just make the whole thing more enjoyable and that will contribute to you getting a higher score. So I hope you find that useful. If you want a little bit more about the UCAT where I go into depth in each of the sections, check out this playlist here. Otherwise, if you want me to coach you one-on-one -on -one to help you get a 3000 plus UCAT score, I recommend that you check out this video here where I teach you about my academy and how we teach our students to do well.